do that. I must say, and, and apologies to my new best friends from, from the UK, I must congratulate Australia on that, keeping the ashes. That was the most fascinating test series eh? I've ever seen. Well done. And they're currently busy humiliating our cricketers back home, so you guys are doing a pretty good job. Um, okay, let's move this on. I'm not here to talk about sport. Uh, there we go. Um, so I'm here to talk about what we've been doing since I last came to chat with you and maybe a little bit about you know, what we're going to be doing until I come back and, and, and talk with you again in a year's time. Um, to orient you once more, um, our rights are just about, start about sort of 200 kilometers or so southeast of Johannesburg. There's the metropolis of Joburg. Somewhere down here is Durban. Um, and we've got Secunda, where Sassel has its power plant, uh, Sinfield's plant right there the industrial centre of Newcastle right there. Our rights consist of, our current existing exploration rights consist of 272, 271 and 270 in this kind of ragged loose horseshoe around here in the Newcastle area. Um, we have exploration rights, we have exploration rights here, we're converting exploration rights into production rights and we're under a reapplication of this right reaching into the free state uh, called 320. You know, it's, just, it's, it's kind of pertinent to note that um, we're just a few miles away from an existing um, helium processing facility in the Free State, run by our friends at Drenagen. And uh, the first place I want to put core holes in the ground obviously are here. You know, if we can add helium to our portfolio, that would be wonderful. A new aspect to our business. So we, we, we kind of plonked right in the middle of, of the, the infrastructure of the country, the energy center of the country. If there was any place you could want to actually go and put gas in South Africa, you'd want to put it right here. We've got uh, coal mines, um, I beg its pardon, um, we have coal mines around us, uh, we have uh, power stations, Majuba right here, Tatuka right here and others. Uh, all of these uh, big yellow lines here are, are, are major grids with capacity by the way. Um, coming out of the North Cape where the uh, renewables are, it's completely choked up, you can't put another panel in there, with, uh, you can't transport the power. Um, and road and rail and this lily pipeline is of huge importance. Uh, this, this gas pipeline feeds from the Sassel plant up here. They receive everything down the Romco line from, from Mozambique and comes down this lily line to off-takers from Newcastle all the way down to Richards Bay and Durban in KwaZulu-Natal. Um, these guys are, are facing a bit of a gas cliff. Um, the fields in Mozambique are drying up while well, they're going to be depleting over in a couple of years' time, and um, they, they're facing an existential issue. I might, I might refer to that a little bit later. But, um, you know, if you've fallen asleep, now would be a very good time to wake up and rejoin us, because look at this. Our, um, our Spruill report that we got within the last month or so has given us a report, uh, a resource, a 2C of 6 TCF, Given the new rules, the new PRMS rules, which I'm sure you're all affair with, uh, they couldn't give us a contingency outside of where we've got holes in the ground, see? So everything within our rights areas outside of where we've already drilled wells um, or boreholes, they've had to call that prospective. We understand that. At, we've got almost another six in prospective right there, which we will slowly convert into contingent just, as, just by putting holes in the ground. Um, they did, a, they did a maiden reserve uh, report for us based on a pinprick. If, if that, that little light is too big, if I could hold it steady enough, uh, the little light would be too big. About 0.18% of our geography is covered in that reserve report. It's to do a, a pilot production plan, and um, uh, we're going to put about 30 wells in the ground, driving about 15,000 tons per annum of LNG. This is all very exciting. Um, tell you a bit about... Uh, this opportunity a little more. Um, I hope you had a good look at the map because there's a quiz coming. Uh, not really. And um, beg your pardon. The land holding is more than 6,000 square kilometres if we include the area under reapplication. Uh, the gas is also very high quality, like we heard just now from uh, from another gentleman, up to about 98% methane. A little bit of nitrogen. We've got no nasties. We've got no sulphur. H2S. Not even CO2 in this gas, no traces. It's, uh, it's almost pure, pure methane with a little bit of nitrogen. Very little or no scrubbing required or polishing. Um, it's conventional, it's not unconventional uh, CBM. It is conventional shallow sandstones that we get our gas from within that matrix. Therefore, no fracking required, no plans for that whatsoever, no horizontal. We may do some, uh, some, some slant drilling at some stage. Um, we have a 100% success rate. 41 holes have cut gas, all of them, 
100%. Um, I'm ready to call it a world record unless somebody can correct me. Uh, it's a fantastic success rate that we've got going on. Um, the development will be based on, on kind of uh, building up of, of clusters of, of 10 wells, each producing to a 5,000 KTPA LNG train, building up to groups of about 100 wells or so, pr providing 60,000 uh, KTPA chains, or 50 megawatt equivalent. Um, the development, um, what we've announced very recently as well is a relationship that we formed with the IDC, that's the Industrial Development Corporation of South Africa, basically the government's investment arm. So this, this is a great manifestation of their um, confidence, if you like, in our project. Um, they are going to partner us for a very, very long term. We're talking about multi-decade eventually. And um, if you look up there, uh, the initial plan is to go, stage one will give us this 100 well sort of 50, watt, uh, 50 megawatt equivalent uh, production opportunity. And then, and then we multiply that uh, by 10 times up to 500. And eventually for a 20 year long term production plan, maybe 1.5 gigawatt equivalent um, in, in the, the area of 271, if you remember the map to so the southern half of that, uh, of that block. Um, stage one will cost about 1.67 billion rand, uh, South African rand divided by 12, you can do it yourself for Aussie dollars. Um, it's broken about two thirds into equity, one third into debt, and on the equity side, uh, we're taking 70%, IDC takes 30 but because of a deal that we've struck with them, they've been very kind with a premium uh, in consideration of, of, of money spent in country to date. Uh, their 30% their is going to cost them 60% of the cost, and our 70% equity is going to cost us 40% of the cost. So that makes it very much easier for us to do. Why are we doing this? Well, we've got what's called load shedding at home, planned rolling blackouts, multiple times a day for multiple hours at a time. You just don't have power. I think it's quite novel coming to, to Perth and being able to charge my phone whenever I like. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a serious problem. We just don't have enough power. I think Standard Bank worked out we're short of about 13 gigawatts in South Africa. So we need all the energy we can get our hands on. The coal fleet, which uh, we rely on for about 85% of our coal, is aging. They've not been doing maintenance. Um, and the government is, is being pushing to, to clean up its act because we, although Africa itself is only about 3% of world emissions, and South Africa is two of those three. Um, you know, they, they've been pushed quite hard to clean up their act. Uh, Eskom burns a lot of coal, Sassel burns a lot of coal to liquids, to make liquid fuels. Um, one more point, I have uh, registered our project at the President's office. They've got what's called the SIP, Strategic Infrastructural Projects Commission, and they use the power of the President's office to reach into government departments and chivy along our permitting and our applications when they, when they go through the uh, for, for example, minerals and energy or, or water or, or uh, environmental uh, departments. So it's an expediting process and hopefully that will cut some time off our, um, our production right application. The gas cliff I mentioned uh, earlier that everybody's facing in the country because Sassel provides 100% of the gas in South Africa. Well, here we are today, right? Th these are the fields in Mozambique onshore. Peaked at about 2017, held their own. Here we are today and look at this cliff we're facing. There's nothing really they can do about it. You know, they are frantically drilling more holes. They're probably drilling an equal amount of dry holes versus, uh, versus gassy holes. And they may sustain it for a bit, but we're facing an existential problem for our thermal industries in South Africa. And uh, most of those down the Lily Line, well, they, a lot of them are, of course, talking to us because that line comes through all three of our rights areas right now. Um, as I said earlier, our 2C, is, uh, has been pegged at, at six, our, our perspective at another 5.8. And um, uh, this is just a comparison slide. Uh, it's, it's one of the largest onshore gas contingents, um, two seas in the, in, in the world. And if you, com if you compare it with, alongside the quality of our gas, the size of our geography, um, and the immediate market that we have, uh, it's gotta be up in probably the, the top five percentile on the planet in terms of onshore gas opportunities. Um, very brief look here at our, uh, at our capital structure. I won't spend too much time here. Post-merger, we've been uh, in the process of merging with our partners in South Africa. That is all but complete. We're right at the finish line. Uh, all the regulation is in place. Ministerial approval, Reserve Bank, um, uh, Revenue Services, the shareholders on both sides, full approval. And we have just recently, literally in the last week or two, um, 
I think we've just recently announced the fact that we've now got the funding in in order to fund this, this merger of the two companies into KKO. KKO Connecticut becomes the 100% owner of the rights holder in South Africa, which is Afro Energy. Uh, so post merger, we'll hold uh, 1.3 billion shares, uh, market cap of about 160 odd um, million uh, dollars. And I'm well funded. We, we are working debt free, it's important to note. I'm well funded for the rest of my exploration program. Um, and uh, this is also an important bit, uh, BEE in South Africa, Black Economic Empowerment. Um, we need a minimum of 26% to drive our production rights application. We are oversubscribed for that. We've had a lot of interest uh, in, in the recent year and weeks with, from, from uh, local investors in South Africa, good solid investors that we're very happy to have on board. And. Um, uh, so as I said, I'm well funded. I'm, I'm going to be able to complete our exploration program out in, in blocks 270 and 272. We're done in 271. There's no reason to put another, another uh, exploration hole in the ground there. But we will be doing some appraisal work there. So let me just briefly tell you what we're going to do this year and then on to next. Um, the completion of this acquisition, as I said, is just uh, a formality. We just have to issue the shares now. So in the next week or two, you're going to find that complete. Um, we're going to be begin drilling uh, five appraisal wells. If you remember the map, I told you there'd be a quiz right down near Forks Wrist at the bottom of 271. We've got five approved areas to go, uh, uh, well sites, I beg your pardon, to go and put appraisal wells in the ground. These are going to inform the, the, the wider projects of that southern block area, block 271. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to put five holes in the ground. We're going to look for sweet spots around which to design uh, production uh, projects. And we're going to be doing extended well testing on at least one of them instead of uh, flow testing for three or four days, maybe three or four months. So we can understand the plateau. We can use the microdata to extrapolate to a depletion curve. And this, of course, feeds more accurately into the economic model. Um, the, uh, the term sheet that we've announced with the, with the IDC is uh, busy evolving into uh, comprehensive agreements. Um, we're going to test the gas to power concept in our field. and. Um, that, that'll drive, uh, with our well gas, we'll drive a little one megawatt plant that we're going to put in the field in about two months' time, um, and we'll measure the output and be able to show you, uh, look what our gas can do, right? It's a, it's a show-off exercise. Uh, it's something we've promised the shareholders for a while, and it's something we're going to do right now. Um, the application for the production right is underway in 271. That's busy being built, and um, we carry on with our exploration in blocks 270 in the south, where the rig is right now. It just finished its 41st borehole. It's moving today to a, a site literally about two or three kilometers away from that lily line, where we're going to do another strategic borehole and prove gas once more. So hopefully it'll be 42 out of 42. Um, going forward to next year, um, I'll, if, if, you, if you like some detail on that, obviously, you can come and uh, get a copy of this from our booth outside. I invite you to come and have a chat with us. But uh, the first half of next year, we're going, to, uh, we're going to drill an additional five wells in the Korhan cluster that I spoke about last year. So we'll have 10 there, basically ready to already drive one of those 5,000 KTPA chains um, as we get our production right. The, the rights will be granted by about the middle of next year or so, maybe early Q3. Um, the planning for the uh, 50 megawatt equivalent field will be in place. We'll have the exploration right granted again for our 320 and uh, looking at gas and helium in that, uh, in that specific block. And um, as I said, we're going to do extended flow rates. So next half of next year is going to be very busy, increasing the, well, well, the rig count to about 10 and um, moving on into our production era. I'm going to stop it there. Thank you very much. Good.